Good morning, Hill Avenue Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Zachary Johnson. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning on this, uh, the Feast of Holy Trinity Sunday. I'm glad that you are here, and it is a beautiful sunny day, and uh, it is a day that the Lord has made, and so we will be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, I have a few announcements for you before we begin our worship today. Um, the first is uh, a couple things regarding our worship today. Um, so, our organist, Grace Lee, has graciously agreed to come and play the piano for us to accompany me on the hymns uh, during our worship. Uh, and today was supposed to be her first Sunday. Unfortunately, she emailed me yesterday and told me that she is under the weather and not feeling well. So, unfortunately, she can't come today. Uh, so I will be singing the hymns a cappella, but we can look forward to having her accompany me on the hymns, uh, doing a live prelude and postlude um, from our chapel uh, in the future. So that's something that I think will help to enhance our worship uh, as we continue to do it virtually. Uh, we hope that Grace feels better. She will still post a video postlude today uh, after worship. Um, and we hope she feels better, but we are excited that she will be joining us, uh, joining me here in the chapel to provide some live music for us. Also, um, our soprano Michelle Toon uh, ha has recorded a video of the psalm setting for today's worship, Psalm 8. Uh, it is posted on our uh, Hill Avenue Facebook page. Uh, so instead of reading through the psalm today, uh, I would encourage you uh, after worship, uh, to uh, watch her video, listen to her uh, sung uh, version of the psalm setting. Uh, I think that's uh, wonderful that she's able to provide that for us uh, and is another uh, way that we can musically enhance our worship. Uh, so uh, I, I encourage you to check out that video, which is currently on our Facebook page uh, for the psalm setting. And then uh, finally, uh, in terms of worship, so... Technology is wonderful and great, and it has been uh, something that has been really helpful to us as uh, we uh, navigate through this pandemic. It has allowed us to stay connected to each other. It has allowed us to worship still together, even if we're all in our own homes. It has allowed us to have some fellowship together. It has allowed us to continue to study God's Word together. So technology is wonderful. However, it does have its limits. And unfortunately, uh, I discovered this week that uh, Facebook Live does not allow you to play videos while you are live streaming. Uh, and so because of that, um, we are not able to watch Bishop Eaton's sermon live during our worship. Um, so what's going to happen is... Uh, when it comes time for uh, the sermon portion of worship after the gospel reading, I am going to give a few uh, remarks on uh, my understanding of the Holy Trinity. Uh, but I have posted on our Facebook page a link to the YouTube video of Bishop Eaton's sermon. And so I would encourage you, once our live stream worship has concluded, I would encourage you to go to that link and watch Bishop Eaton's sermon, uh, so that you still get a sermon for today's worship. So it won't happen during our live stream, but it is available to you for you to watch after the live stream has concluded. So again, just to remind you, when we get to the sermon portion of today's worship, I will have a few remarks on the Trinity myself, uh, and then we will move on with the service, and then once our live stream is concluded, I encourage you to click on the YouTube link to Bishop Eaton's sermon and watch her sermon, which again, that YouTube link has been provided on the Hill Avenue Facebook page uh, for you to, to use to go and watch her sermon. So, a little bit different today uh, because of our technology uh, constraints, but we'll still have wonderful, meaningful worship uh, today, and I hope that the Spirit will speak to you in some way today. Um, just a reminder that our food pantry ministries can still use your financial support and help. Um, uh, 
You know, we're having, uh, as, I've, as I mentioned before, we're having an uptick in the amount of people that come to us on Saturday mornings uh, looking for food. Um, and so because of this, uh, our supplies are running out quicker than anticipated, which means uh, we have to go and buy more supplies, which means the, the funds are depleting faster. So if you are able to give something to our food pantry ministry so that it may can continue to feed the hungry, um, that would be wonderful and great. Please send in those offerings to the church, designate them as food pantry ministry, um, and uh, we'll make sure that they go to the food pantry so that we can continue that important ministry as we continue to navigate through this pandemic. Um, because, of, uh, because of my schedule and things that came up this week, I was not able to record a Q&A with PZJ this past Friday, in case any of you are wondering. Uh, we will try and get it recorded uh, as, as soon as possible, as soon as time allows for me. Uh, there is at least one more episode that we're going to do, so uh, when, uh, obviously when that is posted, it will be on our Facebook page. I will try and give everybody a heads up when we do post that video, um, but uh, if, you're, if you were wondering what happened, why it wasn't there on Friday, uh, it was mainly due to scheduling conflicts and things that came up this week that uh, consumed my time. So, I apologize for that, but uh, there will at least be one more episode of Q&A with PZJ that will come up uh, sometime this next week. Just checking my list here to make sure I got everything. All right, we're good. So, uh, let us go ahead and um, get going with our Holy Trinity worship. Uh, before we get into the Thanksgiving for baptism, let's just take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts for worship. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We will now sing our gathering hymn, hymn number 413, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Uh, the words are printed in your virtual bulletin. Uh, feel free to please sing along with me. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Thy 
glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While the wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God sent, sent them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly up above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, 
Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. <clears throat> and it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. <clears throat> Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, <clears throat> and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything he made, and God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and, in, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, I invite you for the psalm setting today to check out the video that Michelle Toon posted uh, with the sung setting of Psalm 8. You can watch that after our live stream worship. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, halle, halle. Hallelujah, halle, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, just a reminder that here I will give a few remarks, um, and I encourage you after the live stream worship to 
clicked on the YouTube video link to Bishop Eaton's sermon, which has been posted on our Facebook page. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For centuries, ever since the idea first came to Christian theologians, the Trinity has mystified us. It is so hard to explain how three distinct persons are still one distinct person. How the three persons of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the one holy God. The three and the holy one, three and one, holy three, the holy three and one, the holy one and three. See, it's even hard to say. <laughs> It is a mystery. Theologians have tried to use systematics, to use examples, analogies, facts, anything to their, at, to their grasp to try and explain this holy trinity, this triune God that we claim as Lord and Savior over heaven and earth. And it's not an easy task. And Every analogy that we use does fall short in some way. There is part of every analogy that has been used that doesn't fully describe the Trinity. There are analogies that we use that have bits of condemned heresy in them from the church. So it is quite a difficult task for any pastor any theologian, anybody, to talk about the Holy Trinity. And yet that is the God we worship, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Over the years, I've tried to use different analogies, different metaphors for God as the Trinity, and of course, they have all fallen short in some way, and I've never really fully liked them. But for a while, I didn't know how else to try and explain it. But then, thanks to Richard Rohr, who wrote a book called The Divine Dance, and thanks to the book called The Shack, I had a better understanding and what I feel is the best way to describe the Holy Trinity is to understand that it is God in relationship with God's self. That the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are in so, such full and complete loving relationship with each other that they make up the Trinity while still being one together. They are unified together through their love, through their perfect love for each other, an equal love. And so it is, to me, the best symbol or image for the Holy Trinity is a circle. That the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in a continuous circle together that is grounded in their perfect love for each other. And that love never ends. And that love is always continuous and perfect because God is God and God can love perfectly. And so they are in continually in perfect communion together as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which makes them one together, which makes them one God. Now, I'm sure that this analogy also falls short. In some ways, and I'm sure if any of you out there are <clears throat> systematic theologians watching this, you're already tearing my argument apart about the inadequacies that it represents in explaining the Trinity. And, you know, that's fine. I've come to accept there's no good, perfect way to explain this Holy Trinity God of ours, that, we, that the best thing to do is to embrace it as a wondrous mystery. And to see that what it represents to us 
is a communal love that we get to be a part of. God has made room for us in this Trinity love. And that was done through Christ's death and resurrection. When God took away the powers of sin lording over us and gave us the opportunity and freedom for new life. And so because of that, we are invited to join in this Trinity community, this loving Trinity community, this circle of divine dance that is grounded in God's perfect love. Now, it is true that <clears throat> because we still are bothered by sin, because we still haven't been fully reconciled to God, because sin still haunts our lives in different ways, and we are not perfect, we are still broken human beings. We sometimes move ourselves out of the dance because of that sin. We sometimes forget that we are a part of this loving community, this communal love with the Trinity. But the good news is, God will never forget us. No matter what we've done, no matter what we've said, no matter how ashamed we are of past actions, God will always invite us back into the dance to the grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. That was the whole reason Jesus went to the cross, to show us that ultimate sin, ultimate death, will not stop God from loving who we are. And so while there will be times where our brokenness, our sin will get the better of us, and we will fall out of this loving dance with the Trinity, the good news is, is that because of Christ on the cross, because of Christ's resurrection, God will always invite us back into loving relationship and tell us that our sins are forgiven, that God's love and grace restores us, and so that we, each and every day, continue, can continue to participate in the love of God and spread that love to others. And it is that love that we celebrate today on Holy Trinity. It is that love that unifies us as people, as the body of Christ. And so because God frees us to be a part of this loving dance, and God continually invites us back into that dance, even when we have fallen away, God not only wants us to know that the essence of who we are is this loving community, but God also frees us then to proclaim that good news to our broken world, to those in our community who feel oppressed, those in our community who feel shunned, those in our community who feel like they are unwanted, that they are disrespected, Because the truth of the matter is, we are all God's beloved children. God invites all of us into this dance. And what good news that is. What joy that is. To know that God loves us so much that God will always invite us back into the dance. So that we can continue to be grounded in God's perfect communal love. With God as the Trinity and with each other. And what good news that we are free and that we get to proclaim that to our world. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 412, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. 
Again, the words are printed in your virtual bulletins. Please feel free to sing along with me. Come join the dance of Trinity before all worlds begun. The interweaving of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. The universe of space and time did not arise by chance. But as the three in love and hope made room within their dance. Come see the face of Trinity, newborn in Bethlehem. Then bloodied by a crown of thorns outside Jerusalem. The dance of Trinity is meant for human flesh and bone. When fear confines the dance in death, God rolls away the stove. Come speak aloud of Trinity as wind and tongues of flame. Set people free at Pentecost to tell the Savior's name. We know the yoke of sin and death, but our necks have worn it but smooth. Go tell the world of weight and woe that we are free to move. Within the dance of Trinity, before all worlds begun, we sing the praises of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. Let voices rise and interweave, my love and hope set free. To shape in song this joy, this life, the dance of Trinity. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all lay leaders, and all the baptized, in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, you call everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all who are in need. We especially pray for those members of our prayer chain, for all those hospitalized, all homebound members, all caregivers, all essential employees, all those who are grieving, the unemployed, and those who are affected by COVID-19 in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith, as the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who will travel, renew all who will enjoy this time of Sabbath, and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you comfort all of us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. You give, we give you thanks for the saints of all time in, we give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those who are, that are too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share a sign of peace with those around you. Again, we now enter into Holy Communion together. Uh, please have your uh, bread and wine slash grape juice available. Uh, again, when we get to the words of institution, we will speak them together. Do the best that you can. Again, please know that if you don't say the words exactly with me and like me, that doesn't matter. What matters is that we believe that Jesus is fully present in, with, and under the bread and wine. And so even though you may not stay them with me or you might stumble over them with me, know that you, the sacrament is still valid because of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn as we speak the holy, holy, holy together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. We will now speak the words of institution together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the, his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With all your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun, moon, and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, 
now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I now invite you into a time of contemplation before you commune yourself and those around you. Please take these moments to prepare your hearts for communion, to confess any sins that you wish to confess before you commune, or to just sit in reverence before you commune. When you are ready to commune yourself and those around you, please do so. Hopefully you all had enough time to commune yourselves. We continue with the post-communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer after communion together. God of the wisdom table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Holy Trinity live stream worship. I hope the Spirit has inspired you in some way today. Again, I encourage you to, once you are finished, once you are finished with, with this live feed, to... Um, uh, go and click on the link, the YouTube link, to Bishop Eaton's sermon, so that you may uh, listen to her preach on the gospel. Uh, and also, uh, if you haven't, uh, check out Michelle Toon's uh, Psalm 8 setting video as well uh, for the psalm today. And now, please bow your heads to receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. 
God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. <clears throat>